if you service a local region, you only have to beat the other chiropractors, the other real estate agents, the other whatever in your five or six mile radius. If you want to take it to the next level, then you do things like digital plumbing, which is about remarketing, which is about building conversations, collecting email addresses, um, optimizing your Google local search results. So you're there in the local three pack. You know, when you do a search for chiropractor Brisbane and I see three that show up, how do I make sure that I show up there? How do I make sure that I, I have a good Yelp presence? Welcome to the Marketing Your Practice podcast, where we guide natural health and wellness experts through the pitfalls of marketing. Each episode, you'll learn simple, effective, easily actionable, and heart-centered marketing strategies. And here's your host, Angus Pike. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, friends. Welcome to the Marketing Your Practice podcast. We've got a round two here. Our last conversation, uh, we dived so deep, we covered so much information that we didn't get through it all. We've got two fabulous guests that already in this last week, I've had more feedback than many of our episodes. So I want to wake, wake, wake. I want to welcome back to the show, Jake Campoli and Dennis Yu. Guys, welcome back to the Marketing Your Practice podcast. Pleasure, Angus. Thank you. I hope that introduction there that had some stumbles in it was um, a reminder to our audience that sometimes things don't have to be perfect or it might just be me. So um, guys, last time we started off a conversation, we were chatting around, where do I start with my digital marketing? Um, mm -hmm. It's a cause of overwhelm for so many of our listeners. The overwhelm that shows up in terms of time and or technology. And we did, I think, a really great job, or you guys did a really great job showing first half of the equation, which was creating content that was going to have more people know, like, and trust you that ultimately ended up getting the phone ringing. Um, yeah. <laughs> we talked about the second half of that being the digital plumbing, but I wonder if Dennis and Jake, if you guys could give me or our listeners perhaps a 90 second kind of review of what we spoke about last time. And if you haven't listened to that episode, go back and listen to it. And then we can kind of dive into the digital plumbing side of things. So Jake, the floor is yours. Oh, um, oh, that was a, that was a while ago for me. I had a lot of finals in, in between since then. <laughs> <laughs> I just finished. I just graduated. Uh, oh, congratulations, just, buddy. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, what Jake is referring to is the fact that when you are training, you know, whether you're a doctor or an attorney or a pilot there, by the way, these aren't three copies of the same thing. This is volume one, two, and three. Oh, that would have been a sneaky little slide of hand. If that was just three of the same book. I'll show you, I'll show you the slide. Like you can flip through it and you'll see the slides and the training and the checklist are actually different. Mm. They're different for every one of these. And a lot of people, like you said, Angus, when they see stuff like this, how do, how do they feel when they see training like this? Oh, man, this is like me getting my five-year chiropractic degree again. So, uh, yeah, it's not exciting you for you me. Were, you thought you were done with school. Yeah. So yesterday, we covered the fundamentals of what you need to have in place if you want to have a strong digital marketing presence, meaning that the customer is doing the work for you in digital, meaning that we're recording simple one-minute videos in the structure that we talked about before so that your digital marketing engine is your customers that are talking about who you are. It's you sharing your knowledge and you sharing your why and things that are important to you, things that you already do, but you're just doing it with the camera on. Now, if we have those ingredients, those little videos recorded on your phone, not requiring a professional, no video editing, no expense, no nothing but you and your phone for one minute, which you certainly have time for, so there's no excuse. If we take those videos and then we post them on Facebook, and we boost them for a dollar a day. So you can afford that. And a dollar a day for seven days is $7. And you might have 10 of these videos. So now you spent $70. And Australian 70 is even less. What a deal. <laughs> or, you know, 70 euros. Then that alone, like we talked about before you turn the podcast on, that alone is enough to get most people results. Mm -hmm. So whether you are a chiropractor, or an orthopedic surgeon, or a dentist, or a personal injury attorney, or a real estate agent, that is enough because if you service a local region, you only have to beat the other chiropractors, the other real estate agents, the other whatever in your five or six mile radius. Mm. Okay? It's like running from the bear. You only have to run faster than the other guy who's with you. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, and most other practitioners are doing nothing. 
That's so, right. So you have to be better than them. Now, if you're doing it in New York City or Los Angeles or whatever, Beverly Hills, there's a little bit more competition. Okay, the standards are higher. But if you do just that, that's enough. However, if you want to take it to the next level, then you do things like digital plumbing, which is about remarketing, which is about building conversations, collecting email addresses, um, optimizing your Google local search results. So you're there in the local three pack. You know, when you do a search for chiropractor Brisbane and I see three that show up, how do I make sure that I show up there? How do I make sure that I, I have a good Yelp presence? How do I make sure my website loads fast so Google shows up organically? How do I make sure I get more word of mouth? How do I maximize my direct mail? All of those things are examples of, of, of digital plumbing because digital plumbing is what allows us to track journeys through multiple stages, mm. right? So if they, if they see one of Jake's one minute videos, then, and that's great. And then, you know, maybe they find, you know, Jake says, this is what you do with tennis elbow, or this is what you do for migraines, or this is what you do, whatever. And it's helpful, but they're not going to remember Jake a couple weeks later, or they're going to be like, who was that that I saw that had that video on what we should do if you have a migraine? The beauty of remarketing is if I track them, if they come to my website and I track them, if they give me an email address, I track them. If they watch my stuff on Instagram and I track them, I can then show them another message. So we, that's remarketing. And a lot of people, a lot of businesses think that remarketing is only in the realm of big businesses. Like big businesses can set up all that fancy technology, but it's actually not very hard. And so today, anyone who's watching with us and you're a friend of Angus, we're giving you that digital plumbing course so you can go through that and do it yourself. But of course, if you find midway through that you, that, that some of these are a little bit complicated or it's not really worth a whole day to go through the whole course, you can certainly hire Jake or one of his team members to do it for you. So that's how we make money. Yeah. And so I want to, I want to touch on some things here for our audience to understand, because it took me a little while in the early days, because I thought that if somebody watched one of my videos and didn't make an appointment, that it meant that they didn't want to come and see me. And till I started to understand concepts like a customer journey or a cold to warm audience or the number yeah. of touch points that it, that it took and that, you know, I, I know from my chiropractic site that, you know, 95% actually higher than that, the people that come to my site don't make an appointment right away. Mm -hmm. And so am I right, Dennis, in assuming just because these people don't make an appointment right away, it doesn't mean that they don't want me, that they don't like me, they don't trust me. We just need to continue to build the relationship. Is that a fair assertion? Oh, if they come to your website and they don't book an appointment right then, it means that they think you're horrible. <laughs> you're a terrible person, that they're going to go with the other chiropractor. No, it, it means that they are in the early stages of the research. Yes. Because when you're looking for someone to do a, a medical procedure, or even if you're shopping for, let's say like, you know, here's a, here's a cocoon gel to be able to smooth your skin. Well, when I do searches for stuff like this, when you go to Amazon and you look for a product, how many other products are you looking at the same time? Are you yeah. looking at just one product? Rarely. Yeah, multiple products. And anytime you're, you're looking for someone to do something that, like a professional service, like maybe a, a traffic ticket, or you want to get your car fixed, or you're going to get multiple quotes, you're going to talk to multiple people, and you may even be doing some research before you even get to the point where you want to buy that house, or you want to get your back worked on, or whatever it is. So what you've probably heard in traditional media is it takes seven touches before, before someone buys, right? You've heard that before. You've heard the seven being yes. pushed around the last 30 years? Yes. It's the much more than that now, now, yes. The number is now 12 to 14. Yes right? Even on things that you wouldn't think people would do research on, like this Burt's Bees. I love Burt's Bees. And I literally spent an hour on Amazon looking at all the different flavors, looking at all the different sellers, looking at the one where they have like a 10 pack where it's cheaper. I'm like, ah, it's cheaper to get 10, but I don't, do I really want 10 or I want to buy one or even on something that that's, that's $2. Mm. Think about how much research people can do. And then, you know what? I did that research and by then I was like, oh crap, I've already spent an hour. I'm, I'm going to go do something else. And I didn't buy anything right then because it was just like too much. Right. Yes. And then I came back later and then I decided I just, you know what? I'm just going to buy this one. Yes. Right. I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy the multi-pack that has all the flavors. Right. And I don't care if it costs a little bit more because I think it's worth it to have the pomegranate flavor. And that's how people are. And they might not be ready right now because maybe they don't have the money because maybe they're still doing research, because maybe they have to talk it over with their husband, because maybe they're changing jobs, because maybe they're, they're like in the middle of doing this other thing, and then you know, they're with their kids right now, and they have two minutes right now, or whatever it is that's going on. And so when we know that it's 12 to 14 touches on average for a local service business, and the 
window between when they first touch you or when they first see your messaging and when they buy is usually two weeks to a month. Yes. Then we need to build, like you said, Angus, that customer journey along the way. But if we're going to build that customer journey along the way, which we understand conceptually, then how do we practically enable that journey to occur? Mm. And that's okay, great. Someone, someone saw your content on Facebook. Someone saw a referral on, on LinkedIn. Someone, you know, talked about you at Starbucks, about what a great doctor you are. But then how do you actually, like for real, enable that next step in the conversation? That's what digital plumbing is. It's the tracking that allows you to send another message to that person, hopefully in a non-creepy way. You know, the, the, the ads that follow you around, right? The remarketing, you just looked at a hotel site, you just looked at this one thing, and that ad follows you around, right? Yeah. That's, that's remarketing. Yes. Now, we can enable remarketing, and people are like, oh, that's really expensive. Um, no, how much money do you need to spend to enable remarketing? Oh, well, I, I do it with a uh, $1.40 a day. So, yeah, yeah I, I think that here in Australia at the moment, I actually can't spend a dollar a day. I think my oh. minimum is about $1.20 something. It might even be a dollar forty. So once I set up that custom audience, I can continue to show my content to them again and again for a dollar a day. That's right. Yeah, so and that's what it is. A dollar a day, if you set that tracking in place, you have the ability to follow up on anyone who's been to your website or is in your email list or has engaged with you on Facebook. We spoke on our last episode. You called it proximity. I called it the mere exposure effect, a psychological phenomenon that says we're much more likely to be in relationships with people that we see often that are close to us. Um, and we underestimate the impact that that has. And I, I want our listeners to understand that if somebody's not choosing you, it, it's probably not because you're not great. It's they got sidetracked. They haven't had enough touch points with you to build enough relationship with you. It's a big yeah. deal to get on the phone. You just heard Dennis talk about the effort that he put into buying. I think was that lip balm that you were showing before? Yeah, this is Burt's Bees. It's a lip balm. Yeah. So Dennis put hours into choosing a lip balm. Imagine, you know, if somebody wants to choose a dentist, a naturopath, a yeah. chiropractor, you know, that takes an enormous amount of trust before we're willing to do that. Please take the steps to build the relationship enough. Otherwise, we're going up to strangers and we're asking them to marry us and we're wondering why it's not successful for us. So can you and Jake perhaps start to walk through where the plumbing starts? If for yeah. somebody, you know, we're, they're hearing new words in around retargeting, these kind of concepts as well. How do we start that off? Um, and, and what might this look like? Oh, we've got a, a screen share coming up. So if you're listening to this on audio, I want you to head on over now to Adio Media, go into the podcast section through there and watch the video because I think <clears> we're about to have a whole bunch shared with us right now. Okay. So you want to narrate some of this? Yeah, sure. We'll talk about this. Okay. Everything that we talk about, we teach as a course because you'll hear a lot of people talk about how they achieve some kind of success, you know, and without the formula behind it, that's repeatable. They could be doing things that you're not able to do or, you know, one of my friends, I won't name him, but he said, Hey, I'm going to show you how I make, a, I can make a million dollars in 15 minutes. And he certainly did, but you know what? He also has a huge email list and all he did is press send on the email list and he generated a million dollars, but he also put in a month of effort, creating a whole course and a book and a product and all this, these kinds of things. So all he had to do is press send. And within 15 minutes, he drove a million dollars in sales. That is not a checklist that anyone else can follow because the ingredients, one of the key ingredients is have a list of millions of people. Unfortunately, how many people do you know that have that? <laughs> not many. Not, not many. many. Okay. Well, then it's not really fair, is it? So anytime you see someone who's been successful <clears> at something, <throat> go one step further to see what did they actually do step by step and can you do these items yourself? Mm. Are these within your reach, right? And this is what we've done with digital plumbing. Digital plumbing was all, is all the tracking that's necessary to enable remarketing to be able to see what's going on with your business. You wanna be able to see what's working or what's not. You wanna see where you're wasting money. You wanna see what kind of content's working. You wanna see if that you know, dollar forty a day Australian's working so you can put more money against it. You wanna see what's going on with your website. You wanna be able to see why your email open rate is high or not. Like all of this, all gathering the data and making sure it's being gathered correctly and tracked mm. correctly is necessary to then be able to take action. So we talk about digital plumbing as the first of the six phases in this overall system, this engine, we call it the social amplification engine. And so then we break plumbing down 
into these three components. There's foundational components, there's advanced components, which you may or may not need, and then there's optional items. Maybe Jay can talk about this for a minute. Yeah, so the most basic, obviously, are like Google Analytics, Google Ads, and Facebook Ads. Um, that's probably, that's obviously where you're gonna spend the most money. And that's like probably easiest to reach people as well, especially when you're wanting to remarket to them and get your, get your touches in as we talked about 12 to 14 now, which I actually just learned, I thought it was still seven. Um, and so to do that, we have to set up all the pixels correctly on your site. And because the pixels are what is, what tracks, tracks everyone that, that comes on your site and exactly what they're doing on your site. Uh, from there, we put, we put all that stuff into Google Tag Manager, which is like where it holds all the pixels, make sure things, things don't break. Uh, and then from there, we can create audiences as well. So like ba based on what we talked about before, as far as like what they do on your site, um, how much time they spend on your site, like the, the pages they visit, like something. So when I set up someone's remarking, like the, as soon as I finish, the first thing I ask, just I've done a lot of chiropractors lately. I ask, so like what are the top three, um, like the top three sites or pages on your site that people visit? And so it'll be like, oh, this one for like neck injuries or something. And then I'll say, all right, so I'm, I'm I, like, I'll create an audience for them, like people who have visited that page in the last seven days, 30 days, and 180 days. And I told them, that like, at this point, you can start creating content for just those people that, that visit this page. So whether it's a one minute video of you talking about that, or whether it's an article or something, usually it's videos because that's the easiest and most effective. Then we can target people with that. Uh, from there, the, like, the optional ones are like Twitter and Instagram. I've, those aren't in LinkedIn as well. Those aren't set up too, too often, especially since I'm working with a lot of chiropractors, but um, some people do have use for them. And Google Analytics, obviously, we, we want to be able to see, like that's a lot of the data that uh, that's collected from your site. And from there, we can use that to make decisions. So most people, their data is bad. And I like to say that no data is better than bad data. Because we come in and we'll look at someone's Google Analytics and they'll say, oh yeah, I have everything set up. I don't need your digital plumbing. I already have it working. I'm going to look at their analytics. And it'll show, for example, on the source medium report, it'll show like 20% direct none. And for anyone that does analytics, they're like, your data is broken. I wouldn't even trust anything that's going on because your website is showing that 20 to 30% of your traffic is coming in off of type in or bookmark. That is not possible unless you're ESPN or CNN or a major site like that. It means that you, a lot of your traffic is not being tracked because you have a site-wide SSL issue, because your site doesn't load properly, you have a cross-domain site scripting issue, you have issues where your email is not being tracked with proper you know, UTM, so it's showing up as direct or, or all kinds. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. All, mm -hmm. all that means is if your data, if your site is not configured for tracking properly, then you you don't e you shouldn't even make any decisions off of it because it's faulty data and that's not even weaving in the pixels that Jake's talking about so now we want to bring a single view together of what's going on on Facebook and what's going on on Google and what's going on on your site that encompasses the majority of what you need because it's a coke and pepsi world right so instagram is owned by facebook and youtube is owned by google so you're actually covering the majority of digital. And like Jake said, if you want to move to Twitter and LinkedIn and Snapchat and whatever, because Gary Vaynerchuk said so, you can. But we want to get the fundamentals in place. This part here in blue, we want to get those foundations in place. That way, anything that you do, any kind of campaign, any idea, any video content, any kind of special that you're running, any kind of news you have, at least you can see what's happening and you can see that whether or not you are running ads. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm gonna set up digital plumbing after I start running ads. Well, don't you wanna make sure your plumbing is not leaking all over the place before you run the ads? Or you're just willing to like just spend money on ads and like if you're, if you're blowing money, if you're just wasting money into the black hole and you can't see what's going on, mm -hmm. are you really gonna be able to figure out later I mean, because you're right, Angus, a lot of people, they start with boosting the post. They make, they make these videos, whatever, and they start boosting it and they start to see some results and then they put in plumbing. That's usually what happens mm -hmm. because then they see a reason for plumbing because once, because once you're spending money, now you're paying attention, right? Because now, now it's like, oh, I, I need to do something about it. I got to, you know, 500 bucks a month or whatever I'm spending coming out of my account now on Google and Facebook. But it's generally better if you can get your plumbing in place before you start spending the money, right? Got it, got it, got it. But if you're it. not spending money on advertising, I wouldn't recommend digital plumbing 
unless you have more than a thousand visitors per month to your site. Yeah, and that's not going to be the case for many of us as service businesses there too. And so the things that in terms of looking at for those of our, uh, our listeners that are just listening, in terms of foundational, I, I would really kind of see here that we want a, a Facebook pixel on there, which is, and again, whether you have the skill set to be able to pop this on yourself, it's not complicated to do. Go to no. YouTube and say, how do I insert a, 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 a Facebook pixel? And then a Google has a similar type sort of pixel as well. Yeah. Uh, what a pixel does is a tiny little piece of code that tags people and, and keeps to builds an audience of all those people that have engaged with your content, come to your website so that we can get ourselves in front of those as, as well. There, the, it would seem from kind of looking at this here too, Jake, they're the two key pieces of pixels to actually get on our site to begin with. And then we create things from there. Is that a fair summary? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Those are like the, like the foundation, like Dennis said. Yes. And then we can start to kind of manage it there. And I notice that one of the things that you've done here is, again, you're talking about kind of, you know, creating a custom audience. When we hear people using that word, Dennis, a custom audience, what is a custom audience? What do they mean when they use that? Uh, so a custom audience would be like um, audiences created from um, people, like actions that they've taken or um, – yeah, based, so like actions like whether it's on your site or even on Instagram or Facebook, like it doesn't have to happen on your site. It can be like if they liked a post of yours or if they watched 15 seconds of a video of yours, then you can create those audience, those custom audiences to be able to reuse to, like you said, you want to send them down that journey to create the next step in the journey. Mm. So, so people engage with you. That, <clears throat> that's the key with the custom audience. Can you say that again, Dennis? Sorry. So the, the technical term for that is called first party data versus third party data. Yes. Third party data is like you're buying someone else's list or it's data that Facebook has where you're doing targeting. But if it's your data because they came to your website, therefore you engage with them or they watched your video or they already are on your email list, that's first party data. It's your data. So the idea of remarketing is if you already have a touch with them on any of these channels because we've set the plumbing in place, mm. then what's the next thing that you can sequence them? You want to show them the next message, a custom audience is what allows you to send the next message to somebody because you already have a touch in. Mm. So if you didn't drive the initial touch, if you have nobody coming to your website, guess how big your remarketing audience is for your website is? Yes, zero. And if you make these, these posts on your Facebook page and no one engages with it, how big is your Facebook remarketing audience? Yeah, same again, a big duck egg. So what is the value of your custom audiences? Your custom audiences across email, websites, social media, Google search, you know, what is the value of all those custom audiences if you don't drive an initial engagement? Yeah, they're zero. So we need to, and that's really what we spoke about last week is creating this uh, content to get some engagement. I'll, I'll give yeah. an example to our listeners. Imagine that you're a dentist and you created a, <clears throat> a five minute video all about TMJ and you had um, a custom audience of people who watched, let's just even say a hundred percent and you might mm -hmm. suggest it's less than that too. These yeah. are people, if someone's going to sit through and watch a three to five minute video all around TMJ, there's a fair chance that these people are really interested in TMJ. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to show them another video afterwards of me talking about teeth whitening or holes in the teeth or braces. Ideally, right. what I would want to do is show them another TMJ video again, add even further right. value to them, and then continue to position myself as an authority and an expert in around TMJ. Now, if you're a naturopath, then maybe it's hormones, you know, a Chinese med practitioner, maybe it's fertility, chiropractor, maybe it's about helping, you know, families raise drug-free families. The more we can put the right kind of content in front of people that they've already engaged with beforehand, the faster we'll get through those, you know, 12 to 14 touches, the more likely we are to have the phone ring um, moving forward. That's why building these custom audiences is so important. Yep. And the custom audiences ultimately will save you money, not cost you money because mm -hmm. it will end up with people coming in to see you. So have I missed anything there, gents? That's the right way to look at it, Angus. And anyone else who hasn't done their custom audiences for remarketing, or if you're just starting and what, what you're going to find is that your custom audiences are going to be really small. It might be like five people or 10 people or 20 people, but that's okay because initially your website or your social might only have a hundred visits per month. That's okay. But of those people, 
if just a couple of those people are watching that TMJ video or your, your three minute talk about fertility or whatever it is, whatever content you have, it could be a blog post from years ago. If they, like Jake was talking about how we can set triggers and events based on how long someone has stayed on the site, not just they went to the page and bounce, but it actually stayed and read it. Like there's all kinds of ways to do tracking. But if just one person, let, let's say that custom audience is just that one person who reads that TMJ article, if that turns into a new patient, how much is that worth, right? So don't, we get this all the time. People are like, oh, the custom audiences are so small. We only had, you know, 20 people in the last month. Yes, but of those 20, if we get one or two of those turning into patients, what's that worth? Is, it, is that worth the $50 that we spent on ads? Mm. Do you think? Probably. Yeah. That, that's why this can work so well for us as, as small businesses. I've got two questions with regards to that, and I'll ask them both and then uh, let you answer them. With regards to setting up, because we can set up a custom audience around people watching our videos, and one of the things that Facebook will ask us is, do you want a 10-second view, a 15-second view, a 100% view? So let's assume that we've made our 60-second video that we spoke about last yep. time. What yep. audience are you suggesting somebody set up? 10 seconds or the whole thing? A through play. It used to be 10 seconds, but Facebook That's changed it a few months ago to say that the 15. default video view optimization is against the through play, which is playing the video all the way through, which is 15 seconds or more, or the length of the video if it's shorter than 15 seconds. Yes. And so, why? Because all kinds of reasons why, because sometimes the video is 10 minutes long or three minutes long. And so a 50% view on a 10 minute video is different than a 50% view on a one minute video. So to keep things apples to apples, we'd like to say through play as a general rule, but if you find and looking at particular videos that your through play to completion rate is high, because they'll show you the curve of how many people fall off. Mm. If you find that a lot of people are making it to the end, then you can actually change the optimization for that particular audience or boosting on that particular video to be based on like 90% or they don't use 100%, they use 95 instead of 100 because at the very end people are about to leave or there's your your bumper with your name mm. and all that. People usually don't stay to a hundred, mm. but if it's, if you get a, if you get a lot of people staying for a long time, then you can extend the through play, but you know, 95% of the time you should choose through play, which is the default for video view optimization. Great. And then the second part of that question is too, is that sometimes in our custom audience, there is Facebook happy for us to advertise to a custom audience that's less than a hundred. There are rules on how big the custom audience needs to be. So you'll see that technically you can upload an email custom audience with 20 or less. You used to be able to upload one person, but then became like a privacy issue because friends of mine would just put their girlfriend in as the one email address and then, you know, harass them all over the internet, telling them how, you know, happy birthday or whatever. Or I've done it before with clients of ours and I show their picture like, hey, you know, just wanted to say that and just creep people out. So they put those rules in place to anonymize the audiences so it, it doesn't, cover what what's basically PII data, which is kind of like Facebook's version of HIPAA. because They don't want to reveal anything that could go too far. So I would generally say anything that's less than 200, mm -hmm. I wouldn't worry about trying to get micro micro targeted. If it's a remarketing audience, just assume that the remarketing audience is of good quality, provided that you have good targeting and you have good content and people are actually staying to watch the videos or staying to watch or read the article you have on that particular topic. Mm. So now, for me, yeah, go ahead. And I, I know for many of our practitioners on here, certainly their website customer audience is well and truly likely to be less than 200 for many, right. certainly in the early days, but you'll get a video views audience, particularly based around that 15 seconds of 200 uh, yeah. very quickly and probably for $7 um, over your week. Um, you'll it be able to achieve to get, that. It is way easier to get a video view custom audience than it is to get 200 people to come to your website. So it's, it's not exactly apples to apples, but the cheapest, the most efficient, the most powerful custom audience is a native video view custom audience, meaning that you make a video, because when you're on Facebook, for example, and mm. you're scrolling, the thing that you're gonna stop for is usually a video. Mm. If you're scrolling through and you see someone has a link to an article about TMJ, you may or may not click on it, but there's more friction because then you have to leave Facebook and if you're going to do that, and it's like, okay, do I have five minutes to read this article? Do I trust who this is? If I don't know who they are, I don't know if I'm willing to give them five minutes of my time right now. Mm. But a video, because it auto plays, people will they'll give you a couple seconds if it looks interesting, and if it's good, then you earn another ten seconds, and you earn another, and they just keep they'll continue to watch. And the longer you watch, 
do you think Facebook is taking that into account, that signal of how long people are staying on your content? Very much so. Yeah, that's got to be an authority trigger. And, and, and if they're taking that into account on what shows up in your newsfeed and the price of your ads, then do you think they're taking into account how long those people stay on your website to engage with your content? Oh, absolutely they are. Yes. So do you think that someone who puts in place digital plumbing on their website and sends those signals back to Facebook and provided they have good content is going to fare better than someone who doesn't have digital plumbing? Yes. Yeah. And that's the interesting thing because the price that Facebook is charging us for our advertising um, is very plastic and it's dependent on a lot of things, our rating and all those different uh, matters that you just kind of mentioned beforehand too. Jake, can you tell me, so that same concept with regards to the custom audience size for a Facebook pixel, is it the same for a Google pixel? Like if somebody comes to my page, my website, and it's just that one person, can I pixel that one person and create a custom audience and then show them a Google ad later on in the search feed? Or does it have to be that same size again? Um, it, actually, is there it ends up there. The numbers are a little bit different depending on what type of custom audience it is. But for the sake of a local business like a dentist naturopath or you know, any kind of doctor you're not going to run in to it's not going to be of practical importance to you for example like the store right. visits a number where over 90 days i think you have to have 10,000 and whatnot like it's not going to matter so what i would do is make sure that you have enough data to be able to feed facebook and if you do that will be enough data to feed google whether it's an email custom audience or website custom audience. Google doesn't have the same native video view remarketing audiences, so I rely upon Facebook primarily for video view, and then for the email and web retargeting, I would run the exact same audience with the exact same logic on both of those remarketing audiences. And for anyone who's, who's confused about what that means, you can see here in this guide, so whether if you're on the podcast, download this guide so you can see all these different steps. We literally go through this step by step as in like click here, click there, click here. And we even have videos that show you where to click, right? On how to do all these different things. Like here's, here's a video on how do you set up your pixel with advanced matching, right? You can see like here this is, right? If you want to sit through it. Now that the Facebook pixel is set up on your website, we're ready to set up your website visitor audiences. This is a really simple process. So first thing, you're going to go here, this assets column, audiences link. It'll take you to this page. Website visitor audiences are a specific type of audience called custom audiences. So you click this create audience, go down a custom audience. Now there's a couple different types. Okay, so you can see how we're doing everything step by step, right? Mm. So everything that we're talking about, don't freak out. If the idea of a pixel makes you anxious, Don't worry about it. It's just like Angus said, it's just a little piece of website code you have to put in this particular place in a particular way. You can have your webmaster. Imagine you had a friend who built your website for you maybe a few years ago, right? Yes. And they can come in and do this for you, right? Yes. Or you can hire us to do it for you, or you can have whatever, another person do it for you, or you can do it. Maybe you're brave and you're like, you know what? I'm going to roll up my sleeves and I'm going to overcome this fear and I'm just going to do it. And you can do that too, right? But either way, you're going to want to have this done because if you don't, you're in the dark with your digital analytics. And if you're running ads, you're going to be charged more because if you don't feed the data back into Google and Facebook, they're going to basically penalize you. Yeah. I want to give our audience just a little analogy here. There was a time a hundred years ago, maybe a little longer than that too, that the skill necessary to drive a car never existed. Um, nobody knew that that was something that we're going to need to do. Uh, it was, there was an unconscious level of incompetence there. Yeah. And then all of a sudden cars started to become a normal thing. And many of you will think back to the very first time I was chatting with a coaching client the other day, the first time I hopped in a car and I had to deal with indicators and windscreen wipers and stopping and all of those kind of things there too. There was a genuine time there that I thought, I don't know that I'm ever going to pull this off. I might just be one of those people that doesn't drive a car like that. Uh-huh. I was prepared for that to be a case. Now I drive and don't think twice about those things. When you go, and we'll talk about some implementation options in a moment with this too. 
for many of the listeners through here, the fact that you're listening is that you like implementing and that this will be new and difficult for you, like driving the car. But within a matter of weeks and certainly within a matter of months, this will be a second nature to you as driving the car as well. There'll be others of you that'll be kind of listening now that'll be going, this makes total sense for me, but I don't want to do it. Um, I need somebody to help with regards to that. And I want to, Dennis, we're talking before we started the concept of the difference. One of the things that allows small businesses to grow is them understanding the difference between an expense and an investment. Mm -hmm. Can I have your thoughts on that and how that might relate a lot to what we're talking about now? So in economics, if you remember back to high school or college, we learned about opportunity cost and the idea that time and money are fungible and that you can trade time for money. And the smart entrepreneurs realize that there's only so many things that they can do. And instead of becoming overwhelmed because of a list of all the things that they could do, they say, okay, which of these things can I farm out? And each of those things you pay money for to get it done. So we were talking before recording this podcast about how we have a maid who comes or about how we pay for a pool cleaner or how we pay for things that are worth less than our hourly rate of what our time is worth. So you guys remember Michael, Ber Michael Gerber, the e-myth? Yes. The idea of working on your business instead of in your business. Mm. And Ray Dalio, who started the world's largest hedge fund and wrote the book Principles, talks about this. He says, think about your business as like a machine. And you are separate from the machine. And you are building processes. You're a mechanic. And you're working on this machine. There's certain things that you need to do that will help the machine run better. And that way you don't have any sort of emotional attachment to the business. You don't want a surgeon getting like emotionally attached to the patient because that's going to cause you know, problems because they can't execute and think logically, logically and rationally. So as you're doing things to improve this machine, which is called your business, there are things that you do that are maintenance and those are expenses, right? You have to change the oil. You have to replace the gasket. You have, you know, use whatever analogy you want for maintenance. Mm. And there's things that you do where you're constructing new things or you're improving upon things. And that's an investment. And the difference between an, an expense and investment is the timeline of when you recoup that ROI. So I happen to have a finance degree. I think Jake does too. Uh, business law. Oh, business law. Okay, whatever. Just graduated. Like Congratulations you, too, yeah. Jake. Thank you. Thank you. But you learn, you learn that there's things that, that you, you have to pay for now that have an immediate benefit now, like to prevent a problem or you have to pay for, you know, your electricity bill or your you have to pay for your mortgage or, you know, those, those are expenses, things that you need to be able to operate the business in the current period. Hmm. An investment is you're putting in money and your expectation is that you will amortize that value over a certain amount of time. It could be a year, it could be five years. So if you buy a car, is that an expense? Yeah, abs well, well most cars are, right. yes. But if you are using that because you are an Uber driver or because you you use a car, you know, you're an electrician and you go around and you fix people's houses and you need a car to be able to carry all your equipment, then that, that's an investment because over time you are gaining value out of that. Mm -hmm. We think of Facebook ads usually as an investment because in the short run, if you spend that, that initial dollar, let's say $50, in that first month, are you likely to make $50 of revenue? Maybe, maybe not. But because you're building a brand and because you're building those conversations that have to get to the 12 to 14 touches point, definitely over 60 days and over 90 days, you're going to start to see that payback. Or another analogy is, do you ever shop at, at a high-end grocery store, for example, and you buy vegetables? Yeah, all the time. So we have a Whole Foods here and they actually deliver within two hours. I remember it was 8, 17 p.m. two days ago and we were scooping ice cream and it was, the ice cream was like, we, we said, you know what? We need an ice cream scooper. So I went to the Amazon app and Amazon owns Whole Foods and I ordered right then at 8, 17 PM, a new ice cream scooper. And at 10 PM, the guy knocks on the door right here with a brand new ice cream scooper. And then I just I added like other stuff too. Cause I'm like, you know what? I'm in there. Oh, this, oh, you might like this too. Oh, you might also like this. Yes. I'll have that too. You start adding and then pretty soon they added like 15 things, but they came within two hours. And now I think about these vegetables or the, or other items that we bought. There's something about the, what is it called when people want it right away? Know, the, the urgency or the, uh, when they can't wait, right. They just need it right now. Right. Yeah. And, and not the emergency, not, not the broken toilet thing, but just like people who, uh, who don't have patience. Right. 
Yep. And then, so the, there's a difference between buying heirloom tomatoes right now. Like I could press a button right now and in two hours, Amazon's going to show up with my, with my tomatoes and asparagus and other things that I can put on the grill. Or I can buy the seeds. Now, if I buy the seeds, I have an arrow garden too with all kinds of herbs like basil and cilantro and mint and dill. But when I plant those seeds, it's going to be four weeks before I get vegetables and herbs. Yeah, now, different if I this, mm. yeah it, well, depending if it's hydroponic one, I'm going to get a lot faster. That's why I like arrow garden so much. Yes. So if I look at it this way, so imagine Angus or anyone who's listening, imagine if I said to you, Hey, I saw you were, you know, you're, you're doing some gardening and I want to get, I want to get those beautiful tomatoes and the beautiful basil like you did too. Mm. I planted the seeds and I checked my plants the next day and I don't see any basils or tomato. So this thing, it was clearly a waste of money. It was an expense, right? Yeah. Faulty thinking. Okay, why? Yeah. Well, because, well, what's your time frame? There's other uh, mis expectations of kind of time frame or bad expectations in terms of what the outcomes are. They both kind of come under poor expectations. So Facebook's an, an investment because of several reasons. A, the time frame to get the ROI is the equivalent of planting versus just going to the store and getting tomatoes right now. Right? Yes. And yep. we, we view the advertising as you're building those relationships with people who might not be ready to buy right now because mm -hmm. when they're on social media, they're not necessarily directly saying that they're in pain or that they're trying to you know, conceive and have a baby right now or that they're dealing with TMJ or they have chondromalacia or that they're not necessarily, on Google they are. Mm -hmm. So on Google, you expect, Google's like selling the crack because you get it right then. The, uh, what's the word for the immediate satisfaction? I can't remember what the phrase is for people who can't wait. Now it's gonna bother me until I remember <laughs> what that is. Because our listeners at the moment are shouting this at the car because they know exactly what it is. So uh, it's not delayed gratification. It's that thing where people just need it right now. They're just always used to having it right now. That instant satisfaction of whatever it's called. Ah, yeah, anyway. it'll come. Yeah. So if we're patient about it, the ROI of being a farmer is a lot higher than being a consumer at the grocery store. Yeah, totally. Because what's it going to cost for you to buy seeds? Versus yeah. what, is it, what are those tomatoes worth, you know, two months later when you have the big tree with all these tomatoes on it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the ROI cost. is higher, but it's a longer time frame. So a lot of people, they start with Facebook ads, just like they start with their New Year's resolution to lose weight, and they give up after a couple of weeks, right? So this, this does take time, but it's not blindly spending money. That's an expense if you're just blindly spending money. Yeah. And I think in amongst that too, because it comes back a lot of what we've talked about today is tracking and understanding how this looks. And I, I can give a, a real example of the last quarter that we ran some ads for one of my chiropractic practice that the, the numbers are about like this, a little bit less than $500 spend over two weeks. Uh -huh. And we had um, 30 leads of which 15 of those came into our practice over the two weeks. So over the two weeks, we've kind of spent $500 um, and earned not much. When I looked at the, and then each week as that goes on, the last time I kind of checked that 12 weeks after starting is that we were from that $450 that had, sorry, it was just under $500 that had come in there too. It had bought in just over $3,700. So yeah. it was, for every $1 that I spent, it's $7 that it came in. But it depends on when we measure it. Because at yeah. week one, I was in the red. You know, it took a month or so until I broke even. But we look at that now, another six months down the track, particularly if we can see the referrals that came from those people now, it, it becomes exponential. But I yes. only know that because I measured it. Yes, the measurement. And yeah. especially over time. So if, if you get that right, if you have <laughs> measurement and you measure over time, then the ROI should be 10 or 20 X. Every dollar should bring back 10 or $20. You can't measure exactly what it is because the referral piece, you don't exactly know. Cause you can, you can have your receptionist or your front desk person or yourself ask, how do you hear about us? And they'll say, Oh, it's from so-and-so. Or they'll say, Oh, I saw your, your ad on Google. I remember when I, I ran the PPC at Yahoo, if you remember 20 years ago mm. and I'd run these ads and we do surveys to see how do people hear about us, right? We were running ads for you for mail and shopping and fantasy football. And these people would say, oh, I saw your ads on Google. Um, I didn't run any ads on Google. I ran ads on Yahoo shopping. What are you talking about? So people don't exactly know and they don't necessarily tell you, but generally 
when people come in, you'll know because if your plumbing set up properly, you'll see it inside their Google Analytics, how many people came in. You'll see it from the Facebook. If you're tying with your CRM, if you're tying to people who fill out a form to generate an appointment, or you know, there's different ways of capturing their information, mm -hmm. you'll know generally what that is. You just won't know exactly how many there are because of the spillover effect, word of mouth, you know, when, when things cross between different channels, like maybe you're running direct mail too. Sometimes when you run ads on Google and Facebook, they're more likely to call the number on the circular that you have out there. Yeah. Attribution is a tricky thing. And we, we ask sort of our patients that, you know, might say, um, you know, why did you choose us? And sometimes they will say, oh, look, I just live around the corner. And then a little bit kind of further, and then we find out that they've downloaded one that they're on our email list. You know, there's many of these different things. They might have seen some of our videos. Yeah. So it can get quite complicated to get into the nitty gritties of it, but you don't need to. The, the, uh, I, this can be such a successful strategy yeah. for you, um, even with the amount of error that's um, a part of it as, as well. So if, um, can you, uh, uh, Jake and Dennis, can you, because I, I, I want to give people two steps to start with their digital plumbing outside of, cause they're going to download your um, course, which I'll have yep. linked to inside of there too. What are the first two things they should do Jake um, with regards to implementing some digital plumbing? Well, you have to, you should, I'm assuming they already have their like Facebook and Google set up, but uh, from there you'd like just getting those codes. We kind of talked about into the right spots. Into right. their site so it's working properly and usually through google tag manager in fact i probably if you can if you can figure if you can do it correctly google tag manager is probably step one and then getting those tag the pixels into there okay so if somebody wants an action list from here gang for you to start to implement yourself get google tag manager implement and put in there your google pixel and your facebook pixel as as well if you're wanting a hand with regards to this um uh, first step, download the free training. That'll walk you through how to do all this step by step by step. If you're wanting, and if you've understood this concept, we've said before that, you know what, I want some help with this to speed this process up there as, as well. How might somebody reach out to Dennis or Jake to have you kind of hold their hand through this? And what would their investment be to have you guys help them through this? So to reach me, uh, jakecampoli.com. Uh, Jake C A M P O L I dot com. Uh, I have a page or a, a page on my website that kind of explains like bas basically everything that's in the the plumbing guide. And from there, you can buy it. Would be one hundred ninety nine US dollars for me to set it up. Price is going up, so the yeah. if you come to this later, it might be three hundred or four hundred. But here, so jakecampoli dot com. If you click on digital plumbing. Yes. It shows you what the items are. It's the same items that are in that checklist. So we absolutely want you to look at it at, at least like anytime you're going to look at the menu, don't just go to the chef in a restaurant and say, I'll just have like whatever you make. Look at the yeah. menu. Look at what other people are ordering. Go, go around and sniff their food and see if you like it or not. Right. And see, see what happens. And if you want, if you just decide that, you know, you don't want to do it or you're just like, it doesn't matter. There's lots of reasons why people don't want to do it. We hear it all the time right? Or your time's not worth, you know, messing around with all this kind of stuff. You're just not interested in this, then have someone do it. But we, we still recommend you to take a look because then you understand what Jake and his team are doing, right? Because yeah. it's one thing to have it done. So Jake will have it all done, have everything set up, send you a one pager showing that we did all the things. But then if you don't put the plumbing into action, then you've just wasted that investment, right? Because yeah. if you don't use the plumbing, to be able to, to run your ads and, and adjust what's working or use the custom audiences that we build for you, then it's like we deliver fresh fruit to your door and you just let it spoil, right? You need to use the stuff that we create for you and we want you to understand what it is that we've done. Yeah, love it. I, I think you know, one of the things, Dennis, we spoke about this last time as well, that you know, there are so many companies out there that are charging thousands of dollars for this work here. And for somebody like Jake who knows how to do it and he and his team, they'll do it for you in a heartbeat. They'll make sure it gets done right. And yeah. for $199, it's a, an incredible uh, offer as, as well. Um, any final thoughts before we kind of wind up today from um, either Jake or, or Dennis? I'll tell you one thing. 
guess how much money we make off of stuff like this net profit. Um, we've, I would, we've done millions and millions of dollars of this. We've some clients have paid us multiple millions of dollars to implement this. Yeah. I, I would say at the $199 mark, probably a not a lot of profit comes out of that in the early stage. So um, I, I would imagine that's part of a process of building a relationship in much the same way we've spoken about on the first video here today, that if Jake does a really great job and shows that this is a fabulous investment, you can bet that I'm much more likely to want to use Jake afterwards to have Jake help me continue to reach more people, make more money, have more impact. So we've lost about $3 million in the last 13 years on this. So if you take the amount of revenue that we've generated minus our cost, our cost is $3 million higher than our revenue has been. Mm. And that's because the mission of our company and what we're doing is creating jobs for young adults like Jake. And I've been fortunate enough that I don't care about money. I was an early employee at Yahoo and they took good care of me, you know, and I want to see other people succeed. And like, I'm at the point in my career, the maybe like you, where we want to give back and we want to share. So you said before that there are a lot of people that are charging thousands of dollars for packages where you're not even sure what's going on or the, the stories are a dime a dozen of people who get ripped off by marketing agencies. Mm. Now, how, how many of these people are openly sharing how they do things step by step? Or is it some big secret, right? I'm, I'm asking you, like, how, this is not rhetorical. How many people are actually publishing their step by step checklist? Would you ever go to? No, the, the, the marketing agencies that I've um, uh, worked with in the past, Dennis, I've never seen anybody show me their. Um, their checklists, their workflow, their processes um, at all. And I'm relatively sophisticated with regards to this thing because I'm maybe just have done it a little bit longer, but have not seen that level of transparency anywhere else. So if you don't have that transparency, several things happen. One is you don't know whether that whoever's doing the work has repeatable excellence because you don't know if they have the competency to be able to do it over and over again, right? So that creates kind of this marketing shysterism. And then it makes it very hard for these marketing agencies to get clients because I'm not exactly convinced that I'm going to hire that agency to do the work for me because I'm not exactly sure if they're good or not, mm. or I'm going to have to use factors that are not really relevant to whether they have the competence, like whether I like their hair, you and I have the same hair, Angus, should that be a factor in whether we determine who we hire? They well, have to have more hair than me to, for me to hire them. It's right? good hair though. I would not yeah. ignore the quality haircuts that both you and I are sporting today, but you're right. Well, I have, I have Jake's hair. <laughs> Jake has way better hair. <laughs> So anyway, you, so how do you evaluate, right? So that's number one. So, it, it, so anyone who's a marketing agency that doesn't have a checklist, their cost of acquiring customers is really, really high, mm. which they pass on to the customers. And then B is that you don't have any sense of certainty or guarantee that they're going to do a good job. Mm. So then not only are they charging you more, your ROI and your benefit tends to be lower. Mm. And because those agencies spend most of their time out there selling instead of implementing. So we talk about surgeons that are busy working on patients and surgeons aren't going door to door, knocking on people's doors, you know, cause they're not selling used cars. People are coming to them, to the hospital. And so we're, our package is super low price because we have zero sales and commission costs. Mm. We don't spend any time out there prospecting. Yeah. Right? We don't hop on the phone and give people free consultations in the hopes that they'll buy a $199 package, right? If you want it, you can buy it. But if you, if you don't, then just go do it yourself. Here it is. Right. Yeah. It's That's about as good an offer as I can kind of give to our audience. It says, here's how you can do it yourself for free. It's a great yeah. training program. I've been through lots of Dennis's previous ones. The videos are great. The pictures are fabulous. It's step by step through there. If that style works for you, then go to the show notes, click the link, download it there too. And then please send Dennis and Jake, but Dennis has put together to message afterwards, just saying thank you. Um, as well. Let other people know that's what you're doing. And then if you want a hand to get this stuff done, I have people reaching out to me all the time saying, can you help me? It's, it's, not, it's not what I do with regards to this. I'll help you with other things there too. But if you want someone to do it, 199 bucks, uh, you're not going to get a better offer than that too. So that would be go to jakecampoli.com. I'll have all those links in there um, as, as well. So I said in my original um, introduction, Dennis, that you know, with you having 750 odd kind of speeches, traveled millions of miles, worked with the big guns from 
Rosetta Stone to Nike to the Golden State Warriors, all those kind of things there too. And that's impressive. Um, your constant push to want to help people out like Jake, our returning service people, um, you know, our new immigrants, all those kind of people there as, as well is really what impressed me and continues to impress me the most as, as well. So um, best place for people to continue to watch you. I know we mentioned it last time, but can you remind them again, Dennis, if they want to kind of see your daily shenanigans, maybe meet your little bunny rabbit that I saw that you had in a picture <laughs> recently. And, and two dogs, which are below here. You can't see out of the camera. I did hear somebody squeaking on a toy before that I figured was probably a dog, not Jake. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Here's, here's the toy. Yes. Right here. Like, Brownie's right below. You can't see her. Yes. She's, she's right below our waist here. She's, she she's looks like she's got a little bit of Australian terrier in her, does she? Is that, well, uh, just, um, what sort of, or is it a blue healer even? I'm trying to think back to the photo that yeah. I saw. Yeah, blue, blue healer. Blue healer, yes. I knew that she was an Australian dog. So, um, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> so where she, do people go to find you and follow? So you can Google me and look at any of the links there. So LinkedIn is probably the best place. Facebook's pretty good. Website's pretty good. If you like to watch videos, there's a ton of stuff on YouTube. It's whatever your favorite preference is. Just Google my name. You'll see a ton of training, whatever suits your fancy. Same thing for Jake Campoli. Yeah. Hey, guys, thank you so much for your time today for, for sharing. I hope this... Um I hope we get an opportunity to continue this relationship. It's been, I, I, I love that I get the opportunity to share you with my audience as well to kind of help them get their results as well. So um, thank you both. Enjoy your barbecue that you're going to after here. And Jake, again, congratulations on your recent graduation. So fabulous news. Thank you so much. Thank you, Angus. And thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. See you soon. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come and check out the Community Influencer Program. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and I'll work one-on-one -on -one with you to apply, implement, systematize, and help guide you and your practice to the next level. Now, you can join me on over at adiomedia.com forward slash join. That's adiomedia.com forward slash join. I'd love to see you in there.